Ciao everybody, Katerina here. Welcome to my home. Um, like I said, I spend every single New Year's with my beautiful parents. However, I did plan for this weekend to have a New Year's Day lunch up north um, at our cottage with a few dear friends. And one of the wonderful uh, recipes that I'm going to be preparing is Chianti Tortelli. Of course, I was in the kitchen with him preparing this wonderful uh, dish and I'm going to share it with you. Now let's get started. I'm going to start with the pasta dough first. This is a really wonderful, unique, different pasta recipe. And we're going to start off with semolino flour. So I have three and a half cups here. I'm going to add it to my mixer. You're going to need your dough hook. Okay, I'm just going to aerate it a little bit. I'm going to add two pinches of kosher salt, three eggs, uh, large eggs at room temperature. I'm going to add one at a time. And three. So here's the star of our show, Chianti. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, start with two cups of Chianti. But I, initially, I'm just going to add a cup and a half. I'm going to check the dough. And if I need more, I'll add more. Okay, I'm going to start adding it very slowly. Okay, so this is what you want. You want the dough to collect around the hook. Now I'm just going to let the dough knead it for five minutes and I ended up using a cup and a half of Chianti. That's why it's very important to go very, very slowly. Okay, so here's my beautiful dough. Just I put some semolina flour down. Now I'm just going to divide it in half, put it in um, plastic wrap. So here they are nice and covered up. Now we're just going to put them in the refrigerator for two hours. So now we're going to start with the filling for our tortelli. Here is a bunch of asparagus. I love asparagus. We're just going to prepare it. Okay, to prepare the asparagus we're going to cut, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean them. So we're going to cut about two inches from the bottom. The woody part, you don't want that. Now we're going to cut the tips of the asparagus for the garnish. Okay, now that the asparagus tips are ready for the garnish, now we're going to start with the filling. Here are the asparagus. I'm going to cut them about half an inch for the filling. I'm going to saute the asparagus in two parts. First, I'm going to do the stalks for about five minutes in a quarter cup of butter. So my asparagus are sauteing beautifully for about five to seven minutes when they're nice and crisp. Okay, it's been seven minutes. I tasted one, they're perfect. I'm just going to place them on some paper towel and I'm going to leave the butter here for the sauce for when I add the asparagus tips and the sage. Mm. To the goat cheese, I'm going to add one egg. And I'm just going to combine it really well. I'm going to add two dashes of black pepper. We're not going to add any, any salt because um, the goat cheese is very salty. Now I'm adding the cooled asparagus stalks. Now to finish this up, I have a rounded tablespoon of picolino cheese. And we're done, the filling's done. Okay, I'm just going to wrap this with plastic wrap and in the fridge, it's going to go while we get pasta ready. So I'm going to start making the sauce because the sage has to infuse inside the butter and olive oil. So here I have about half a cup of butter. I'm going to add 
uh, four leaves. So we're gonna let the sage infuse. Now that the butter has melted, I'm going to add a splash of olive oil. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of salt. We'll taste it later. A little bit of black pepper. And if you like, now would be a good time to add some chili pepper or hot pepper, if you like. Okay, now that it's um, sauteing nicely, now I'm going to add the asparagus tips. And I'm going to let these saute until they're crispy. Okay, this is ready. We're just going to leave it alone. We're gonna let the sage infuse and everything, all this goodness all stay together. Turn off the stove, leave it, and now we can start rolling out our pasta dough. Okay, so here's one of my pasta doughs. I am just going to roll it out. Um, very, very thin. It has to be very, very thin. And you need to use um, the semolina uh, as bench flour. I divided the dough into three parts. And this is how you know the dough is ready, when you see your fingers. Now I'm going to start cutting them. And I'm going to do them in three inch squares. So out of that piece, I've got five, three by threes. Now to this, I'm just going to add a little bit of the filling in the center. This is a little bit of work. This is definitely a Saturday um, job, but it's well worth it and you'll have enough for a couple of days. Now we're going to fold them. So we put it in a triangle like this. We're going to squeeze down the ends. Trust me when I tell you it's worth the work. Now we're going to pinch facing up these two together and there is your tortelli. Perfect. Okay, my tortelli are ready. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in the refrigerator for about two to three hours and then I'm going to put them in freezer bags. I'm going to place them in the freezer and tomorrow morning I put them in a cooler and we're ready to go up north with them and ready to, to cook. But for now, I'm going to um, cook some for now and taste it for you. Now, I would recommend three to four per person. They're quite filling. Um, of course, you can, put, you can uh, serve more, but for today, I'm just going to cook uh, 10. Now, I'm going to let them boil for about five minutes. While my tortelli are boiling, I'm heating up the sauce. Oh my gosh, if you could only smell the sage, the olive oil, the butter, the spirit. Oh, it smells so good. Oh. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to discard the sage. While my tortelli are boiling, I'm just heating up the sauce. Good. I must tell you, I love cooking for my parents. Um, they say I cook fancy food. Anyway, I did prepare this for them one time. My father ate eight in one sitting and my mother six, and they didn't look up. That's how delicious this is. Okay, they're ready. Once they flow to the top, I leave them for an extra couple of minutes, and now I'm going to add them to the sauce. Just gonna let it saute in here for one minute. Look how beautiful. And it's done. Okay, this is how I like to plate it. Okay, this wonderful sauce, beautiful. I'm going to put a little bit of parmigiano reggiano and I'm going to taste it for you.
There are no words. So good. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I'd like again to wish you all a happy new year. And it's Katerina from my home to yours.